Hey YouTube, how's everybody going? JC here with the Cuban Redneck DIY channel. I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to give special thanks to those friends who are supporting this channel by subscribing. And if you haven't already done so, please throw me a bone, man. I'm trying to grow this channel. I cannot do it without the public support. So, uh, notice anything different? Yes, we finally installed our uh, shade sails. Um, it's funny because I wasn't planning to make a video about this, but uh, last Thursday, uh, my friend last called me to see if I wanted to go out fishing on Saturday. I said, no, man, I got to get these sails up. Uh, I understand this. It's snowing through a lot of places, you know, up north. But uh, Florida didn't get that memo. It's going to be about 92, 93 today. And the sun is definitely beaming. So uh, if you want to come out here and have a little lunch, do a little grilling uh, under the sun, it's really not a lot of fun. Not only that, but uh, because I'm facing, uh, I'm on the water, I'm facing west. Uh, the uh, sun uh, shines into the back of the house, making the house very warm uh, in the uh, in the morning and afternoon hours. So, um, with that said, uh, you know some of the issues with the, with with uh, or some of the questions that I got about the sales is a lot of people were telling me that they don't work in Florida, they don't work in uh, in windy areas, etc. Actually, my friend Kyle. Uh, said that he had installed some and, and just a gust of wind came up and just picked the thing up right up. So the trick to having uh, shade cells is especially in a windy condition so like Florida, Arkansas, places like that, Oklahoma, is uh, they must have a little bit of flexibility. If you're making rigid, uh, yeah, they'll become a parachute and eventually rip something out. Uh, with that said, uh, this is not the first project that I do of this nature. I did one back in the house uh, in the Keys and uh, it was very successful. It was up there for years, probably a decade or so. Uh, the actual sails rot before uh, the infrastructure and the assembly uh, had any damage. Uh, with that said, um, I put together a very quick video on just on how to. Primarily I'm going to focus on the installation and the, proceed, the engineering behind it so that perhaps you can take some inspiration and uh, you know put a, a, a setup for yourself it, it, it really makes a hell of a difference and it's uh, it's really nice even on a sunny day to come out here and uh, have a nice shade uh, if you like this video please like and share i greatly appreciate it let's get going Okay, before we get going, I want to start and share with you my mistakes. My original design called for three triangular shade cells, two facing away from the house and one facing in. The issue with that is that these things are not really triangular, but rather a shape that looks like this. As you can see, there is a huge gap between them. Now, I understand that in many instances where shade cells are used, they are just architectural features. However, in my case, I am seeking shade and protection from the Florida sun. I also know that if I'm moving closer, I can close the gap. The trade-off to that is that I lose 8 to 10 feet of coverage. So what I ended up doing is ordering a rectangular piece to cover the gap, and here's what it looks like. With that out of the way, I want to highlight a feature that is 100% optional, but something that I have future plans for, so I decided to address it now. That is these two cement blocks I casted at the edge of the patio slab. Here's what they look like. I made a simple form that kind of curls underneath the existing slab, measuring 12 by 16 by 36 inches deep. I did not record this, but you can go to the same website I went to, Quicket.com, and check out the how-to videos they have. They show many different ways you can go about this, including casting the cement slab if you don't already have one. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the design and the engineering behind this installation. I'm going to be making anchor points on several locations against the house, here and here. I then will be pulling and stretching the shade cells with the front anchors by making a forward tension. I will accomplish this by mounting my columns on hinges and pulling down using ratchet tie straps, something like this. Okay, so no more drawings, I promise. Let's get down to business by installing the anchors on the side of the house. 
because the locations I needed did not line up with the trusses, I had to make bridges out of two by four that I held in place with quarter inch lag bolts. My first set of anchors consists of three half inch by four inch long eyeballs and I drilled them at equal distance. I figure out the spacing between them by measuring each of the cells and adding 12 inches to the distance between the anchor points. Note that all of my sails were off spec dimension wise. I strongly recommend measuring your sails and not counting on the dimensions on the package. The reason I did the anchoring in two different ways is because I already had the two outer triangles up and I did not want to take down the whole thing. So what I ended up doing is making a rig out of two eye bolts and a coupler nut. Okay, with that out of the way, let's focus on the columns. The columns are nothing more than four 10-foot 2x4s. Why 2x4s? Well, they are cheaper than 4x4s and the ability of being able to uh, mismatch or line up the grain in different directions pretty much the same way the plywood works makes them stronger than a single 4x4. After gluing them, I put wood screws every 6 inches alternating from face to face. And after filling all the screw heads with caulking, including the seam in between the two studs, I gave them two heavy coats of outdoor paint to match the exterior color of the house. I then proceeded to install the hardware. Please check the blog cubanredneck.com for a list of materials. But nevertheless, I'll do my best to list them here. You are going to need two 12 inch barn hinges, sometimes called T hinges. I'm using the ones from Harbor Freight. You're also going to need four additional threaded eye bolts. One of the eye bolts is going to get mounted at the height of the roof line, for my case it's 9 feet 6 inches, and the second one is about one third the way down, but this is greatly impacted by how far away your anchor is. Now that we have the hardware mounted on the columns, we can proceed to mounting them. But before we do that, we need to secure our D-ring anchors for our tie straps. Once again, that shows us that from Harbor Freight just because they were very affordable. With that out of the way, we can proceed to marking and pre-drilling the holes for the hinges at the bottom of the column. For fasteners, I chose a combination of expansion studs and concrete screws, also known as top cons. Uh, simply, I am not sure what the strength of this cement is. Uh, it's only been a few days since I cast it. And in fact, uh, it looks a little dark, it's not, like it's not fully cured. After securing all four anchor points, I decided to make a quick dry fit and test my design. It was then I realized that I had a little bit too much lateral play on my columns. With the daylight dwindling down, I ran over to Lowe's and had them cut two 10 foot 3 quarter inch pipes to 94 inches in length and also have them rethread the ends. I also picked up a coupler as well as two flanges. After assembling the rig, I gave it a quick sanding and a wipe of acetone and a coat of fast drying metal protecting enamel. Within an hour, and with the help of a heat gun, it was ready for assemble. With my crossbar in place, I went back and secured all four corners and started to adjust the tension one more time. Because the rectangular shade cell is of a different size than the triangular ones, I had to adjust this separately. So what do I mean by that? You have to adjust the triangular cells first and let the rectangular one lag. You then need to go to each of the corners and adjust the turnbuckle at each end to adjust or equalize the tension. Okay, so here it is. It is the morning after. Yesterday I ran out of daylight, but after a little bit of fine tuning, I am extremely pleased with the results. I truly hope that you found this video informative and I hope you have you as a subscriber for my next project. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. Thank you.